Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 Jayco J-Flight SLX 324BDS. This is a triple bunk model. You have the bunk room with the door, big super slide over here with the dinette and, I'm sorry, a U-shaped dinette and a sofa. Let's take a look at the kitchens. One of the things you'll notice right away is the countertop itself. It is a seamless countertop. It's what they call like a thermal foil countertop in the industry. It's kind of a pseudo solid surface. I say that because even though it's not like a true stone or anything like that, it does allow you to still undermount the sink to have that solid surface look. You'll see the double bowl acrylic sink there, high rise faucet. In the back on the wall, you have an electrical outlet. Uh, I like when they're able to mount it on the wall rather than underneath the cabinets. And when you have this construction method, uh, it allows you to do that. You will also see your controls for your slide awning. Tank monitoring panel is located there too. Right up top, you will see some storage, hardwood cabinet doors. Good storage behind there, you know, pretty standard. Just kind of show you that. Microwave over to the side, hood underneath. You'll also see a recessed three burner cooktop. This one is a Furion, so nice and easy to use. This folds up and back like so. That front burner is high output, important if you're in high altitudes. And you will also see that the knobs light up and you have an oven underneath and that same button controls the light in the oven. If you take a look underneath the sink, you'll see you have enough space for a trash can. I always enjoy manufacturers do that. You also see a little shelf there if you wanna put some cleaning chemicals and of course, access to your plumbing. You have four full extension ball bearing drawers, 75 pound weight capacity on these they say. I don't know that I would test it, but either way you do know that they are nice, strong and solid drawers there. Making our way back a little bit further, Norcold fridge freezer unit. Open this guy up so you can take a peek in there. Pretty standard six cubic foot. You'll see the controls for it are right up front, which is nice. Does run off both propane and electric and has automatic switch over. To the side of that, open that guy up, you see a nice big pantry, can certainly enjoy that. And then underneath the fridge here, if you pop that open, you will see that it's actually pretty good storage there as well. There is some plumbing running through there, but if you want to set, you know, like some bigger pots and pans, well, maybe not too high of pans, but if you have, uh, you know, like little uh, skillet, something like that, you can sneak it right in there. To make our way back, you will see right here on the side of the uh, wardrobe, you have your thermostat as well as your rear slide control. Turn this light on, sorry, it's a little dark in the hall here. Open this up, you will see the wardrobe. This is perfect because you have the kids room right next door, so this allows you a good spot to hang some clothes there. Now right behind me is the bathroom. I will say this is a little tight. Uh, you know, it's, it's fairly common with this style of floor plan. You know, it, but right here, it is a little tight to get through. You kind of have to almost walk sideways, but you can manage. Open this guy up. Come on into the bathroom with me. You will see your foot flush lever toilet here. I uh, prefer if it was a porcelain bowl, but I know, you know, weight's always a concern. So they have the plastic in here. It is a good angle. I have plenty of room for my legs though, as well as my shoulders. Door right next to me. So that way the kids or yourself can just come in, use the bathroom, head right back out. Your toilet paper roll is already mounted, so you don't have to try to find a place for that. Hand towel ring there. Of course, you have your faucet. Good space underneath. Again, you have enough room for a trash can in your bathroom, which I always appreciate. And over to this side is the tub shower. I'll stand in here to give you an idea of space. I'm six foot tall, and folks, as you can see, even without that skylight, I have more than enough room. With it, you know, you can probably be 6'4", still be able to shower in here without having to bend down, and it's pretty centered. So... Uh, they, I think they did a really good job here as far as the shower height. Now, as we make our way into the bunk room, you will see your wider bunk right over here to this side. Um, even though it is wider, this is still considered a single bunk, not a double. So you have 300 pound weight capacity on here, which is still really good, right? That's what most manufacturers have for a double bunk. So you can certainly appreciate that. USB ports tucked right into the wall there. Underneath, spot for your TV, a little bit of storage, built-in ladder so you can climb up onto the top bunk, which is great because generally it's your smaller kids that want to get up there and a the ladder definitely helps them do it. And then over to the side, some additional storage. Window in the back and on the other side are the other two bunks. So again, 300 pound weight capacity on the top bunk. This one here is strut assisted, which I personally prefer the struts over the uh, little locks you have to put into the sidewall here. 
The struts just tend to work a lot better. And underneath, you have your Jayco Cube sofas. Now, as you can see, you have a couple different orientations. You can have it here where they're facing each other, or you can flip them out so the backs are against that wall, so that way they have a good shot to the TV. Either way, those both fold out into beds, makes a nice big bed on the floor there. So if you need to sleep, you know, two smaller kids there, or if you have a, you know, like a teenage kid that's going camping with you, that's probably the bed they will want. Now, as we make it into the super slide here, as I said, big U-shaped dinette, which I love because, you know, that way you can easily sit four people around here. Um, I say four, it's a common misconception that you can sit more people at a U-shaped dinette, and that's just not the case. The problem is, is your legs, right? If you have any more than one person here, two people in the back, and a person there, you really start uh, bumping into each other's legs. Even with two people here, still a little bit tight, but... Uh, the thing I love about a U-Dinette is it does kind of let you face each other. It's better for uh, conversation. You can have people along the back wall. And more importantly, it drops down into a larger bed. So that, for me, that's the big benefit of the U-Dinette is the bigger bed. If you have additional adult guests that need to stay the night, you can have two people sleep here. Uh, also, the material does clean up nice and easily. It, it's not super shiny, which I like. It's still uh, like a vinyl material, but it, it cleans up very easily. As I mentioned, that drops down into a bed. Easy access storage right there underneath. Another important thing too, folks, if you do have guests sleeping here, they're not gonna freeze to death. Underneath the, uh, the slide here, they do use a reflective foil, which helps basically uh, re reflect heat out and also helps keep it uh, a little bit cooler inside on those hot days, or if it's cold outside, it helps with the convection airflow, so that way it stays a little bit toastier in here. So I'll go over that in a different video, how reflective foil works, but just know that having that in the slide out in the bottom of the slide is a good thing for climate control. You'll see more storage right up top. Again, another window right underneath that, electrical outlet right in between the U dinette and the jackknife sofa. The jackknife sofa itself here, lift that up. Good storage space underneath. And then if you take a look at the entertainment center, you will have that located here. You also have the multimedia center right down below. One of the things you will notice is that you have this HDMI cable, so you can plug that right into the back of the TV. You can watch a DVD there. Storage up top as well as right down below. When you step up into the bedroom, you'll see the queen size bed here in the center, right underneath. Good storage, you'll see it is strut assisted, very easy to access that storage, and that does share storage location with your pass-through, so that way you have a couple different access points. Both sides, you have nightstands with electrical outlets there. Right up above, on the one side, you will have a mirrored wardrobe. On the other side over here, you actually have some shelves built in, so a good place for some of your folded clothes. And then you also have the shelf across the top connecting the two with LED lights underneath. Up on the ceiling, you'll see this one does have the second AC option to make sure you're nice and cool at night. And on the uh, other wall there, you will see the TV mount. So that way you can mount a TV in the bedroom, connections for that are up on the ceiling. And lastly, if you want some privacy at night, you'll also see that you have these slider doors right behind the entertainment center. Now that we've seen the inside, let's take a quick look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Jayco J-Flight SLX 324BDS. We'll start right up front with the two 20-pound propane tanks there. Switch over right on the back. Then when we drop down, let's talk a little bit about construction. One of the cool things about Jayco construction is the A-frame. This is actually integrated into the entire frame. You can see how it comes back right here, goes through that frame and attaches to the sidewall. Unlike a lot of manufacturers, which not that we'll get a name here, but if you take a look down below, you will see how they weld the A-frame to the bottom of the rest of it. This, the, the Jayco, having that integrated A-frame is a much stronger design, uh, a lot better for durability, helps prevent buckling of that uh, tongue jack here, of that front end. You will see right down underneath, this unit is prepped for solar, so if you want solar, simply buy portable panels, plug it in right there, and it'll trickle charge the battery. Coming up the front is your diamond plating, helping to protect that front end from rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Up on the roof, it's kind of tough to see, but one of the other great construction features about Jayco is the Magnum uh, truss roof system that's up there. So it's a couple different things they do. They screw everything down instead of using staples. They also have larger nail plates on there. They actually use lumber instead of just thin aluminum straps for your risers. And it has a die flex 2 material up top for your roofing material, which is a uh, non-fleeced back TPO. 
So with that uh, material, you get all the flexibility and everything you do of an EPDM without the hassle of having a rubber roof. So definitely a uh, great roofing system that Jayco utilizes. Taking a look inside, you will see the pass-through storage. And as I mentioned, this does have access underneath the bed right there. Coming back outside, you will see the power awning, touch button to roll that guy out. Same thing to have it go right back in. Speakers are built into the awning. That way when the awning is extended, the music is playing down on your campsite instead of blasting out at your neighbors. That's controlled by that multimedia center inside with units Bluetooth capable. And you have an LED light strip on the awning as well. You have the More Ride Step Above Step System on here. Excellent step system, very sturdy. You know, I'm over 200 pounds, can run up and down this thing, and you don't get that springboard effect like you will over time with your standard pullout steps. Plus, you have aluminum treads. That way, it's not going to rust on you. A little bit of grip tape there as well for some uh, added traction. Making my back a little bit further, if you want an outside TV, you have a mount here for it. Obviously, your cable and satellite output as well as your electric outlet there. Fresh tank fills located on the campsite. So if you're going somewhere you don't have city water, you want to make sure to fill the fresh water tank. And that right there will be the place to do it. Talk a little bit about the axles. You have Dexter Easy Lube axles on there. You also have the Never Adjust Brakes. They're self-adjusting. It's one of those maintenance pieces that a lot of people forget about is to adjust their brakes. And with this unit, you can forget about it. You don't have to worry about it because it does it for you. This one has three uh, standard fold-out steps here. This top one actually isn't folded out. There you go, it looks something like that. Uh, again, you know, I prefer the more ride steps, but seeing as how this is a secondary entrance, this will do the trick. This one, of course, goes directly into that bathroom. Right here in the back, one of my favorite things, of course, on a bunk model is the outside kitchen. So you have storage up top, plenty of countertop space with an electrical outlet. So if you need to plug anything else in there, like an electric griddle or something for cooking breakfast in the morning, for me, when I'm camping next to you, that's the place to do it. You'll also see your sink there, refrigerator, for some of your beverages and condiments. Probably the most important part, in my opinion. You got a drawer right down here. Also, two burner cooktop over to the side. Now, personally, I like to grill more when I'm camping, and that's not a problem. You will see underneath, you have a propane quick connect so you can hook up your favorite grill. Just remember that if it is a camp style grill, chances are it'll have a regulator on there, and it's already regulated up at your, uh, your front tanks. So, what you want to do is actually take the regulator off that camp grill, otherwise, you'll be double regulating. While we're down here, I also want to talk about the, this one does have the fully enclosed and insulated underbelly, which is great because not only will that uh, help keep out a lot of that road grime, but also hopefully some rodents in the off season and it'll help keep things a little bit warmer down there. Rear mounted ladders, you can climb up onto the fully walkable roof. Also backup camera prep. If you want a backup camera, having the prep makes it a plug and play. It'll save you a lot of money on installations. It'll save you money on labor. Right here in the back attached to that bumper is your spare tire with the cover. Cover, of course, is stylish and will help hopefully keep it in good shape. Take a look right up top. You will see your cable and satellite inlet there. If you drop down, you'll see one of two terminations. This one right here is for your gray tank. If you can look ahead right underneath, right behind that uh, back axle there, you will see the uh, black tank valve as well as the termination for that. Right in between the two slides, you will see your outside shower with both hot and cold water access. 50 amp detachable power cord plugs in here, because remember this one does have that second AC. City water in that will be located here. Right down underneath, you will see your black tank valve and termination. It's also worth mentioning that you do have another gray tank valve. If you take a look, drop down with me here, you will see that is located right there. So make sure that you pull that one as well when you're dumping tanks. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is a 2020 Jayco J Flight SLX 324BDS. If you're interested in this bunk model and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.